Welcome to the second morning session. In the session, we're gonna have two talks by uh, Surush and Ali Reza. Uh, we we'll start off by Surush talks. But let me very introduce to Surush. Uh, actually has recently joined the university as a faculty member. Last year, the, yeah. the focus on vaccine dark matter aspects and uh, about uh, uh, his work's important work on the detection of the axion dark matter. Sush, we uh, would like to hear of you. Excuse please me. Go ahead. Sorry. Could you have no noise, please turn off your webcam. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'll turn it off. Uh, Sush, please turn, your, turn on your webcam. Okay, let me start thank you to Al thanks to Ali Akbar and for introducing me and also first of all I have to thank the organizers for inviting me to such an amazing meeting and also thanks to coronavirus that helped me to present my talk from my home so here I'm going to talk about the uh, axion dark matter and the detection ways of the Axion. Let me start with the, out, the outline of my talk. I'm talking about the axion as a solution of the strong CP problem, and then I will introduce axion as a dark matter candidate, and I will explain some feature of the dark matter axion. And after that, I'm going to talk about the detection ways or different detection ways of axion based on the interaction of axion with the normal matter. And uh, the, uh, finally, I will introduce a new way to prop axion like particle based on light by light scattering process. So in summary, in this talk, I'm going to explain you how we can detect axion based on light. This is, this is some kind of uh, interesting topics which attract so much attention in the recent years. So let me first start by the origin of the QCD axion. They came out at the beginning to solve the problem, some, some, some problem in the strong interaction of the particle physics. This, this problem Strong CP problem. I can aim you in one slide in a very simple way to, uh, uh, to, to be familiar with this problem. According to the QCD symmetry, which is a, a field theory of the strong interaction, we are allowed to add this interaction term very simply. This is, this is the gluon field, this is the theta field, and if you add this term to the Lagrangian, then, then it gives you some, some prediction and you can go to the observation and to the experiment to observe what would be the consequences of this interaction. One of the consequences is the electric dipole moment of the neutrons. And if you go to test it, you would obtain an uh, wonderful result. You will see this, this parameter is extremely small, less than 10 to minus 9. And this is, this is some kind of the fine tuning. And in physics, we don't like this, such a fine tuning. So the smallness of this parameter called the strong CP problem. And the axion first came out to solve this problem in some elegant way. Uh, the, the, the axion e exactly behaves as a Higgs in the electroweak interaction, but in the strong interaction. So, this guy, Vilcek, uh, named the axion since, since this, the, the axion cleaned a problem from this, uh, uh, the, the, the strong interaction, the Wilczek put a name of a detergent, the famous deter detergent in that time. The axion on this uh, particle seems to clean up this, the strong CP problem. As I said, uh, while the axion first came out to solve the strong CP problem, but afterwards, 
the people showed that they could be a very well motivated dark matter candidate. And I will explain it more in the following slides. So, so it seems it takes some time to, oh, okay. Okay, Axion, uh, first I'm going to talk about the Axion families. The Axion families are belonging to, to the bigger family. The people call them weakly interacting sub-electron volt particles. And they can, they can divide to, to, to these four families. The QCD Axion, which I uh, explained to you in the previous slides, they have one uh, free parameter and they came to solve the strong CP problem and also they can uh, behave as a dark matter. Axion-like particles are the second family. They could uh, couple to two photons and they have two free parameters. They also could be dark matter candidate. And, uh, but, but the difference between axion-like particle and axion is they have, the axion-like particle have, uh, has a two free parameter, mass and the co uh, coupling. The third family are ultra-light axion, which, have, uh, which has very small masses, extremely small. You could see the less than 10 to minus 18 electron volts. The people also call them fuzzy dark matter. And uh, there is no uh, connection between the light axions and uh, the QCD axion, which means they, they could not solve the, the strong CP problem. And also axion light particle has no connection with the, uh, the strong CP problem. And the fourth family are the string axion. They, they came from the string theory, uh, the string theory. So, in this talk, I'm going to focus on these, two, these first two families of the axioms. And I'm uh, going to explain how we can detect them. The axion can couple to the standard model particle. For example, they can couple to gluons, they can couple to photons, and also to fer fermions. So they can participate on different process. For example, we could have nucleon Burmistral line by the axion. We could have Compton scattering. And all of this process called axion emission process, and they can play roles in the astrophysical process. In, in each situation that we have uh, photons, nucleons, and we have such interaction, we could have uh, the, the, the axions. And the important point is, everywhere we have observing some anomaly in the astrophysics or physics, we can go to this, this hidden sector of the standard model and look if we can find some explanation based off the axion physics. And from other point of view, also we could design some experiments based on this interaction to detect the axions. So, in this talk, I'm going to focus on the electromagnetic interaction of the axions. Here you can see the axion can couple to the two photon, and according to the, this interaction, the axion can decay to photons based on this relation, which the decay rate is proportional to the, 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 the axion coup, the second power of the axion coupling and the, the mass Q. If we use the QCD axion parameter, which means the, the mass is proportional to the coupling, we would get this value for the decay constant, which is 10 to minus 25 per second, the scale by mass to five. So, in order to, uh, since we demand the axion or the dark matter candidate, they have to survive over the lifetime of the universe. The lifetime of the universe can be defined simply by the 
Hubble, current Hubble constant. And we have to impose this, this, this condition over the axion decay rate, which means the lifetime of the axion, which is one over the axion decay constant, should be bigger than the lifetime of the universe, which is one over Hubble uh, scale. So it shows you the only low mass axion particle could be the dark matter candidate. This gives you this uh, sub-electron volt particle. So, so, if we are talking about axion as a dark matter candidate, this, this, this part of the parameter space is excluded at the beginning. And the only axion can exist as a dark matter in this mass window between 10 to minus 1, 11 to 10 to minus 24 electron volt. So, if uh, we don't care about the axion be dark matter, they could have any value of mass, depending on the coupling strength. So, so let's, let me uh, just explain to you what's, what's the main difference between axion and the previous dark matter candidate. The people call them WIMP, or weakly uh, interacting massive particles. The weakly interacting massive particles, as from their name is clear, they have very large mass, between 1 to 100 giga electron volt, but the axion have very small masses. Axions are bosons, and they have a large number of occupation number. Here you can see, for example, for a, a 1 MeV mass axions, you have 10 to 15 axions per one uh, wavelength Q. This is, this is, this is the, the number you call phase space occupancy number. This shows you, this large occupancy number shows you the axion can behave as a classical field, as a coherent oscillation. Uh, the speed of this WIMP, which behaves as a particle, the, the, and the, the majority of their waves, the, uh, waves is based on the scattering process. But in the, in, in the case of axion, also do the, uh, due to the small masses, you have a very large de Broglie wavelength. And interestingly, if you put the mass equal to 10 to minus 22 electron volts, you would obtain one kiloparsec for their De Broglie wavelengths. And this led you to solve some, uh, some, some problem, for example, in the, uh, uh, the, the, the structure formation, for example, the core cost problem. The, the, uh, this is some, some, some motivation that the people are interesting to the axions. So, the axions, the speed of the normal dark matter candidates are behaving as a wave. So based on this behavior, we can design some uh, ways to detect them. As I told you, the axion can couple to the photon, so you can uh, modify maximum based on the axion-photon interaction. Here you can see modification which comes from the axion photon coupling. For example, here you can see there is some uh, effective uh, electric field in the, by the axion. Here you can see some effective charge. So you can design a very high precision experiment to uh, measure this uh, deviation from the Maxwell equation. Another interaction which is very interesting and actually what I did in the recent years is based on this interaction. The axion field can intermediate between two photons. In other words, photons talk to each other by exchanging axions. This induces some nonlinearity in the Maxwell equation. In the normal Maxwell equation, since the photons are 
has, has no charge. They cannot interact to each other. So you have a superposition principle in the linear Maxwell theory. But the story will be changed in the presence of the axion particle. And I will be come back to this point in the, in the uh, following slides. So, the first process I'm going to talk about is axion photon conversion in the presence of the background magnetic field. This process first introduced by Pierre Stevie. Since the axion have, has very small coupling with the photons, you can enhance this interaction with the background magnetic field. And this is the decay constant, which can be simply computed, uh, computed from this uh, interaction. So, based on this process, you can design different strategies based on axion photon mixing in the presence of the background field. Whenever you have photons and you have background field, you could use this strategy to look for axions. And you, you, you could find such a situation in the ground-based experiment and also in so many astrophysical observations. But the essential point is high precision measurement in both cases. Since the axion are dark matter candidate, they have very small coupling to the photons. So, let me me uh, first uh, focus on the detection of the axions which originating from the sun. We call them solar axions. According to this interaction, we could have a flux of the axions which coming from the uh, sun, for example. They can help to sun or other stars to lose energy or it can play a role in the star cooling process. This is the flux of the axion. As you can see, it is uh, 10 to 10 per centimeter square second KeV. Scaled by the axion coupling to photons and also the energy here, you can see. And if you put or if you align your telescope in the direction of the sun uh, and if you, if, uh, as, as you can see here, if you put your telescope uh, aligned with the sun and put a magnetic field inside the tube of your telescope, you can reconvert it, the axions to the X-ray photons and then you can detect them here. This is the, the conversion probability of the axion to the photons. And if you multiply that previous factor I showed you, the axion flux, and also the axion, the photon, the, the axion to photon uh, conversion rate, you will get the number of photons you will detect in your detector. This is 10 to minus 6 with these uh, units scaled by g to the 4, which is the axion to photon coupling. And uh, the, the, the ins this instrument called helioscopes, since the helios is the Greek, uh, the Greek god of the sun. The, the people call this uh, instrument helioscope, since it's going to detect the axions which are originating from the sun. So, the next point, which is very important, is the precision of your detector. The precision of our detector is something like this number, 10 to minus 6. And detector record the background layer up to this factor. And if you have a detector with this, you know, with this uh, area, uh, effective area, they can uh, record uh, 1.2 photons per day. So based on this sensitivity, you could the, the, the people put some constraint on the axion photon coupling uh, versus the mass. You could see this, this blue region is good region in, term of, in, in terms of the mass. And this, this is one of these instruments is, in, uh, is located in the CERN. They use the useless LHC magnets to construct this uh, instrument.
unfortunately it takes to launch a slide. So, uh, as I as I said, the axiom also could, uh, may, uh, construct the halos, the halo, and the axiom behaves as a, a coherent oscillating uh, uh, right down the local uh, dark matter density in terms of axiom field. If you are a guy and you have a bag in your hand and in your bag is instruments which can convert this interaction of the axion and translate it to the photon signal simply you can make some uh, instruments to detect the dark matter in the halo if it's uh, if it forms from the axion I don't know if you see my slides or not because yeah, 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 I cannot yeah, there's, see them. Yeah, yeah, everything is fine. There's no lag. Everything is fine. You can see that, and there's no lag when you change the slides. It's okay, you see. No, because I can. Because I can. Oh, okay. Because I have yeah, it, 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 my computer for for these slides. It might. Be, okay. It might. It might be due to your connection, but, but we are fine. Everything is fine. Please go ahead. Okay, okay, let's change it. Okay, uh, the point is, the point is, as I said, this is extremely small signals, and if you put the magnet field around Tesla, for example, uh, uh, you could have some, some induced electric field. Here you can see a scale by the axion photon coupling, but this electric field, uh, in your instrument is extremely small. It's 10 to minus 12 volt per meter uh, scaled by this magnetic field. And uh, uh, the, the, but uh, and that is a, a, a big uh, experimental to measure the, this extremely small signal. But simply, you can use some some resonant cavity to enhance the the signal. For example, if this blue uh, blue uh, line or the electric field induced by the axion field, you can put a resonant cavity to enhance the signal and then you observe, you, you would obtain uh, po electric power, enhanced electric power of the, of the axion signal and then you can simply detect the axions. So, the uh, so so the axion dark matter as uh, oscillating field and the oscillation frequency is the mass of the axion and you have some dispersion which defines by the velocity of the dark matter which is similar to the velocity of the uh, galaxies is 10 to minus 3 times the light velocity for Example, in order to, to, to have this signal in your instrument, you have to have a resonant cavity with this quality factor, which is 10 to 6. The, 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 uh, so it seems you have a dark matter radio. It's interesting that you're tuning your radio for, to find an unknown frequency which is the dark matter mass you have to turn your radio and play with that find the station exactly it, it is what the people are doing in the axion detection staffs so uh, so unfortunately i have lag in my slides i don't know what I should do right now i uh, i also don't Yes, but yeah, no, this is okay. Go ahead. Can you see my slides? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 
yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's okay. Please go ahead. Okay, maybe I can uh, parallel follow from, from, from my computer if if, if there's any lag. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so here you can see, you can see different experiments. So many experiments nowadays are going to, to, detect, to detect axions. And here you can see just some of them. For for the review, you can you can go to this to this to these reviews to see some uh, some of these experiments. And the are all of these experiments are going to look in different corners of this parameter space to find the axion. And if there is no axions, you have to fill all of this parameter space. So. In the next uh, few slides, I'm going to talk about our uh, detection strategy. In our work, we are focusing on the polarization of the, uh, the polarization effects induced by the axions. Since if you have a magnetic field in the background, your axion field can induce some polarization effects or can put some polarization impacts on the axions. If you, uh, you can translate it to the, to the refractive index of the medium. For example, you could have a real part of the refractive index which uh, obtains some contribution from this interaction. And also you could have some absorption in, the fo in your photon intensity which comes from this uh, photon to axion conversion. And uh, due to this interaction, you have two uh, refractive index for the different uh, direction when you have a propagating field. So, uh, Suresh, uh, yeah. sorry, you have five minutes left. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. So, if you have uh, the axion in the presence of the magnetic field, uh, you could have two refractive index, and if you inject a linear polarized light to this medium, the different components of the electric field obtain different phase velocity, and then you could have some circular polarization coming from a linear polarized signal. This can encode in this parameter, the people call them ellipticity signal. And also, you could have another effect which comes from absorption of the photons in the presence of the magnetic field and also in the presence of the axion background. It can absorb some component of the initial light which going through the medium. So you could have a change of the, uh, the polarization plan or rotation of the polarization plan. The people encode this in terms of angle of polarization plan. And you can express them in terms of the axion uh, parameters. For example, this uh, ellipticity change and also this angle change, they depend on the coupling of the axions, the magnetic field, and also the effective interaction length. So, in order to enhance this polarization signal, you could use an ultra light magnetic, ultra high magnetic field, which can be exist in the ground based experiment and in so many astrophysical medium. And also, you can uh, using the moderate magnetic field, but increasing the interaction. Also, in this way, you could find so many. A situation in the astrophysics and also in the ground-based experiment. And finally, you could use a huge number of photons to enhance the signal. This is the setup I, with my colleagues, uh, designed it to, uh, to, to find the axion effect in the very small experiment, just eight centimeter cavity even you can put in your bag or you put on the bed on your bed or to to detect the axion this is this is very interesting idea so this is this is the interaction we focus on it and this is the magnetic field we put in this cavity and we 
are aiming to measure the uh, the phase difference between the cavity modes uh, when you have a signal here. So as you can see here, you use the high thinness cavity. The thinness of this cavity is 10 to 5. So you can increase this 8 centimeter to 30 kilometers to enhance the interaction length of the photons with the background. And then finally, you could observe this phase difference between two polarization modes. So this is the potential discovery of your experiment. Here you can see the cast experiment that I talked about to detect solar axion. And here ALPS and IAXO are some projected experiment. Here you can see our experiment in different stages and cover a very large region of the parameter space and it can reach even to the QCD action region. This is so interesting with such a small experiment and current technology you can design an experiment to detect the action. So but you have to care about the background signal and you have to remove them. One of the most important background signal is a, is a signal or is a noise which is coming from uh, just, uh, just two so, slides. I yeah, yeah, we ran out of the time. Okay, just let one me just okay, let me just, just conclude it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Okay, just uh, uh, here I want to say uh, uh, you you have to use also you you have to remove the, the the background signals and in other experiments we propose just we use a high power laser uh, to uh, to enhance the signal. The high power laser provide you ten to twenty one photons and then enhance these uh, signals. And instead of the background magnetic field, we could use a high power laser. And here you see the summary of our result, which can scan this parameter space. And as a conclusion, just I want to draw your attention to use the astrophysical, like, for example, extragalactic light, the pulsars, which provide you very high magnetic field, the gamma ray burst cosmic microwave background, all of the polarization measure of that with the new upcoming measurements can help you to put shed, uh, to get some light on the discovery of the axions. This was my slide and this is uh, my uh, remarks. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh... Uh, do you hear me? Do you hear me, Suresh? Thank you very much. Yes, so yes, we have, uh, yes, yes. We have, yeah, yeah. We have time. Yeah. We have time for a couple of questions. Any question? You can write your question uh, in the chat, happy or happy. you can just mm -hmm. raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. Hussein, please turn on okay. your okay. mic. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks. Thank uh, you very I much, Suresh, for nice talk. And um, interesting for me to see we have such research in Iran. Um, you said that um, the length of ac axion is about, uh, the Dobroy length of axion is about one, uh, one kiloparsec, and it solves a uh, core cost problem. And um, yeah. uh, is it because of, um, I mean, uh, when the Dobroy length is, I mean, one kiloparsec, it means that in a one kiloparsec, size scale of galaxy we have some kind of repulsion for particle and for that the uh, the, the core will be smooth out from particles uh, did i get right yes exactly you are you are oh. you are you're right the, the point is it is not that the, the wavelength is not one kiloparsec the wavelength crucially depends on the mass of the axions yes, for the, for the, for the light light axions, Yes, exactly. The, you know, they uh, prevent from concentration of the matter and yes, the center. Exactly. And it, it is can like, solve. Yes. 
yes, yes. It is exactly the same as uh, degenerate uh, pressure in, in white dwarf that produced by electron because the, the Dubrin length is, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the same scale of the, the separation of particles. Uh, I think so because because yeah. I'm not uh, familiar with, with with what you're talking about. You're you're talking about the degeneracy pressure because because yes. it's a bit uh, yes 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 you can see you you can say that because that degeneracy pressure is also originating from the the some quantum effect of this yeah, wavelength. But exactly. well, the point is here your bosons the 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 axioms yeah. are bosons they are not fermions. Ah, oh, but. Yeah, so it is. It should be some difference. No, no, it's not due to the degeneracy pressure. It's not. These are both bosons and can condensate. What the problem uh -huh. or or the effect? It's the effect of the Dobroy wavelength. You know? So, so why the Dobroy wavelength is matter here? I mean, because you know, it's quantum effect. The, the, the name of fuzzy dark matter. You know, it means that th these particles are not so extended objects. You know, they're yeah. extended objects. So the in, in this sense, you know, positive, you know, it smear out everything. It can avoid the core cost problem, or you, you can it can erase the the void uh, the, the dwarf galaxies or something like this. You know, mm -hmm. so do, you, do yeah, you yeah, yeah. take that by simulation, for example, yeah. cosmological yeah, yeah, simulation, yeah, yeah. simulation for putting yeah. the particles with such properties yeah. and yeah. see if the the galaxies. I mean, for yeah, with like, uh, extended course. Yes, there are there are nowadays so many ongoing uh, yeah. simulations in in, yeah. in these students, directions. Yeah, my students are doing such simulation in Sharif University. Such with I mean, cosmology for acts, gadgets and ah yeah. You know, if 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 I uh, if uh, if I want to add a comment on uh, what. Uh, the Hussein said yeah. the the point the point is the the situation is exactly similar what what happened in the genes instability in the structure formation here you have some instability but at the very large wavelengths at the you know the Dubrov wavelengths of the axions and okay Ali Akbar, yeah Ali Akbar, I should ask you later about uh, this your okay. simulation that I have a question by Shahriyar Mutamedi. Uh, he asked, uh, thanks, but sorry, I don't understand what's measurable quantity or physics of your work for det detecting dark matter. And uh, do, do, do you, did you hear me? You know, actually, actually, the point is, uh, if if I want to be so precise, what we propose is some me method based on polarity uh, uh, and measurement quantity. The phase difference between two photon modes inside the cavity induced by this axion background. Since all of this electromagnetic interactions uh, respect to the parity uh, to the parity symmetry so so you could not have you you cannot have any circular polarization from an initially linear polarized light without violating parity uh, parity symmetry so the the axion like particle can uh, do this for you Okay, Surush, thank you. Uh, let's thank uh, Surush again. Uh, uh, in order to be on time, uh, let's know it's time for the second type of uh, talk of this session by Ali Reza. Uh, Puria, would you please change the slide?